I clicked live. Hey, someone check my channel and see if I'm live. Check, check. Hey, if anyone sees me, let me know. I have to actually go to my channel. Hey, check my channel, see if I'm live. I click live, but I don't know. Hey, someone just posted a comment. Okay, I guess I am live. Hey, that's weird. Now the second question is, can anyone hear anything we're saying because it's really noisy in here? How's it sound? Is it too noisy? Can you hear what I'm saying? Check, check, check it a check. Hey, okay, I guess we're good then. Hey, how you doing? This is the mic right here. Make sure you're close because other people are noisy. Guys, you know, I have a, I have the microphone at like six foot, six foot four here, so it's actually above me there. So now, now I'm standing on a step. So hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Elvis is here. Hey, Elvis. We got Elvis. Hey, it's morning. We got the real Elvis. Holy time. We told you he wasn't dead. Whisper, we told you he was alive. Beyond tonight, beyond, beyond. It's now or never. All of them play. It's now or never. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait. Yeah, wait. Hold on. Yeah, so we just wrapped up the conference and everyone is here. So I said, hey, what happens if I just click live um, at random? So uh, let's see. We'll just we'll just take out. We're, we're, we're going to take off here shortly. So we'll just take some comments here. Amir. Now, it's going to be hard to talk because even though I'm right in front of the microphone, Sam Shimon will still be louder 30 feet away because he needs attention. Uh, anyway, Amir. Amir said, uh, hi David, where are you? In a party. No, we just finished a conference on Christian apologetics dealing with Islam, um, evangelism towards Muslims and so on. Uh, Jay Smith is is back there. Maybe we'll get him over here in a second. How many people say it's Oh, yeah, right. That's right. It's sleep, baby. Uh, Diego said, uh, Anthony Rogers! Hey, hey, good to see you, Diego. So, everyone knows my nickname is the Dizzle, D Dog Dizzle. Um, Anthony's new nickname is going to be A Raj. Like A Rod, but like Raj from uh, What's Happening. Was that called What's Happening Now or What's Happening? I, I, think, I think there were two uh, shows, there right? Two. Yeah, there, there were two. two. Okay, What's Happening? What's, okay. Yeah, and that's probably before the, most people's time. Rerun! Rerun! <laughs> Rerun was, was great. Rerun was awesome. Who didn't love Rerun? <laughs> uh, let's see. Hey, boo. I hear you guys. Hey. This is Elvis Lee, baby. Elvis Lee, don't be hating. We can we can hear you, David hey, Anthony oh, Rogers. Hey, 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 hey. I, you did amazing yesterday. I, I think oh, it's a cross. He looks like a cross between Rocky and Elvis. Oh, yeah. Hey, yo, Adrian. Yo, so uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of. I've seen. A, hey, what do you mean here? Hey, he just called him A Raj right before I announced that's his name. <laughs> what do you mean? Said A Rod. You got to put it together like A Rod. A Raj. All that time to grow the beard and you shaved it already? I know, guys. Would you please tell Anthony he looked way cooler with the beard? As as a rule, reformed dudes in general look way cooler with beards. Uh, I think Anthony. It's annoying. To... It's annoying. Lots of things are annoying. We put up with them, right? Sam. Sam. Okay. Yeah. True. All right. <laughs> uh, we got lots of comments here. Uh, ben said. Anthony, you beast, you smash a beer. Yeah, he, man. Anthony. It's been it's been sent around as a as a screenshot, but guys, did you see Ajaz Ahmed, who he was a student of Shibir, wasn't he? What, he what was, was he? He was uh, until he got fired for doxing people and, and stuff like that. Watch it. Hey, man. Hey, you can see my receding hairline, baby. <laughs> this is Elvis hey, Pelvis. He, he, got, he, got, he, got the, he got the He got the wig right. What? So, uh, yeah, so Ijaz said 
after those two debates, he asked Muslims, has Shabir won any debate in the last five years? I don't know any. It was something like that. But, I mean, he was so disappointed in Shabir that he, he, just, he, he, to he totally threw him under the bus and was like, this yeah. is not our guy. Why, why that's messed up is, I don't know about you, but I like Shabir way more than I like guys who are like doxing people and uh, the people who are running around threatening people, talking about uh, executing apostates. Like that, you know, the last generation, the previous generation of guys who are like more, you could get along with them. And the younger guys are more aggressive, they're angrier. And uh, I mean, it's kind of funny if you guys want to go that route because it's not working out well for you. Got, not going to work out for, well for you, Muslims. But yeah, they're throwing Shabir under the bus. And Anthony, I have to say, I cannot think of anyone who would be better than Shabir on those topics. So you just took out the guy I would regard as best. Do you guys think of anyone who would be better than Shabir on those topics, talking about the Trinity and the Bible? Or um, uh, I, I was actually. <laughs> is that? I, I was actually. We're live. We're live right now. We're on YouTube. Um, okay. I, I was actually thinking, who else is there to, to engage on these things? Because I I did, and I don't oh mean goodness. this. I, I you know other people are the ones who are commenting, saying it went as well as it did. So I don't mean this to, to try and you know speak a little closer. You know, say certain things, but uh, I'm thinking to myself, who else is there that, that I would like to debate? That I would like to engage on these topics. You know, because Shabir was the person that I thought of. We're live. We are on YouTube. Stop with the attention. No, I don't know. Dude, you're riling everyone up and ruining everything. Have you ever not ruined something since? <laughs> uh, let me wait. Let me scroll down to more recent ones because these are way behind now. What are they saying? What are they saying? Oh well, this guy needs to go probably. Are you watching us? Okay, can I take it off now? Because it's killing my head. Ooh, man. Um, so yeah, guys. Uh, any. <laughs> come back. Oh, come Fareed back and reacts. Man. Maybe they're saying in response to our question, "Who else is?" Obviously, Fareed's not even. In no, he would, he would, he, no, and he, he won't. He won't debate. We, I mean, right, we, right. We asked him a million times. He's making videos. We asked him a million times. Join us live. He's like, no, I don't. So, I don't debate. So, so George here who put on this event, George stood outside of the mosque that Yusuf Estes teaches at and had a big sign challenging him to do a debate with me. He won't debate. Uh, I don't know really any other Muslim, the caliber of Shabir with the longevity of Shabir or the integrity of Shabir really because even though I think there are times when I'm surprised that Shabir is repeating an argument that I know he's been refuted on before. And that leads me to, you know, have some questions about what's what's going on in terms of motivation. But I can't read his motive, so I, I let that sort of thing slide. But, uh, I, you know, he is overall leaps and bounds beyond a lot of these other guys. So I, I don't know who there is. Yeah, and let's uh, let's check a couple, right? Let, let, here, here you have your first suggestion. Zucker Nike, the medical doctor. Who won't debate Christian debaters. And, he, and I'm, as far as Zucker Nike, I'm in a long line behind Several other people that have challenged him. You, Sam. Um, Jaziel said, "Did anyone record the conference?" Um, yeah, it was. It was. It was live to people who signed up for it to watch it on. On uh, what, what's the situation there? You're a tech guy. Come here. You're a tech nerd. So as far as I know, um, talk closer. As far as I know, <laughs> the the conference was uh, was live on the Ministering to Muslims website. So if you go to that website, there should be uh, a tab uh, pretty soon coming up where we're gonna be able to see the conference. All right, and uh, yeah, and by, by the way, y yesterday was a bunch of debates, so those debates are already live on this channel. So, uh, so some of it's already available, but the, the debates were, were part of this uh, part of this conference here. Uh, Coffer Linda Clark says, "Anthony, your scriptural knowledge amazes me." Hallelujah! Yeah, uh, I've been to Anthony's house, and every wall in his house is lined with books, and you can ask him about any one of those books, and he'll tell you everything that's in the book, right? He's talking thousands of books, so yeah. And dude, I, I have to say, the other people I know who have phenomenal 
memories, when it comes to massive amounts of infinite information, they all end up weird like Sam Shamu. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're, they have phenomenal recall on information, but they're massively messed up and screwed up and weird in other ways, like Sam, right? Perfect example. His brain is turbocharged in one area, doesn't work in any other area. You're the one guy I know who's like still normal. Well, one thing How, I say happen? about Sam is we had an example of it just a second ago, right? Yeah, definitely. That's what I mean. Definitely off his rocker. Um, you know, it's hard to talk about yourself, at least in my case. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm odd or not, but uh, one thing, the only thing I'll say is, as far as reading and stuff like that is, all of it is because of my conversion. I read two books in my life by the time I was 18. Two books. I had no interest in reading. I had no interest in school, no interest in education, no interest in any of that. It had nothing to do with anything other than my conversion to Christ. I had an immediate love for reading and haven't stopped reading since then. So it was all birthed by a desire to read the Bible. And uh, you know, I thank the Lord uh, for giving me the retention that he has. And you know, I, I've told people, one of the reasons I don't sell books and one of the reasons I don't do the uh, you know, online type stuff, a lot of people like those things and this is not putting any of that down. It's very useful, I, I know. But I don't, I don't get rid of books and I, I buy books instead of getting online stuff because I remember what I read and where I read it. So if I ever want to find something in a book, I could go find it within 30 seconds. If I even if I read it 20 years ago, you're off screen. Um, well, that's because I wanted people to see uh, Uncle Fester. Can <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Hey, what did they think of Elvis? Hey, well, how good was Elvis? They thought it was it was spot on, dude. Everyone was super impressed. Elvis, how now, how now he looks like chance. the guys from the the guy from the Goonies. How do? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, a skinnier version. <laughs> Ruth, <laughs> Ruth, Ruth. <laughs> but a skinnier version. Sloth wasn't fat. He was muscle bound. He was uh, a football player. Oh, okay. right. I'll yeah. take it. I'll take it all day. That's a compliment. Yeah, it's mainly <laughs> it's mainly the face though that looks exactly like Sloth. Anyway, <laughs> baby, <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> Uh, you, hey, you have a recommendation, Yasser Qadi. What's up? He won't so, debate. Uh, ministry to Muslims. Uh -huh. uh, the tab is uh, our strong tower. Uh, if you go to ministry to Muslims .com, ministry to Muslims .com, you can find the uh, you can find the conference. Um, yeah, so we've been here. We started talking. Yeah, this has been Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and now we're all done. Uh, so you had a, a request for Yasser Qadi. What do you think the odds of Yasser Qadi coming on will be? He won't debate. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's... he's the, the, the only even exchange he had was with, with James White, where they weren't even allowed to criticize each other's views, right? You could only ask questions and couldn't couldn't critique anything, something like that. So, yeah, I don't think he's up for any sorts of debates. I don't think there are any uh, openings, or should I say holes, in his schedule uh, for us to do that either. Um, he's probably a pretty busy no, man. There are no fielding. holes in my schedule. <laughs> He's probably fielding a lot of uh, questions right now, and who knows what else. Um, let's see. Uh, Trevor Phillips said, uh, "Trevor Phillips said, show us around. Um, everything's kind of balanced up here, precariously. So I think I can pull up this camera, though. That's even hanging by a thread. But yeah, this is just the room where we were having our conference." Don't worry if you see Sam, if you ever see Sam, if you ever see Sam speaking to a woman, don't, don't worry. Um, if they became remotely interested in each other for even a second, I would jump in between there and say, no, would not allow that to happen. Right. Um, <laughs> not allowing it to happen. Nope. Sam is off limits. He's too weird. He's too weird and messed up. Um, let me let me scroll way down here. So the the place was filled earlier, just so people know. So yeah, Jay we, was here. Uh, Jay's still yeah. here. He's sti sitting over there. Yeah, go 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 grab Jay. Can you go grab Jay Smith? Tell me you want to talk. Oh, and uh, and uh, Abdullah there too. Yeah, the guy. Yeah, we got an ex-Muslim over there. Where is Oh, she left. Who? Sm Smalley woman? Yeah. We had we had a uh, we had a woman from Somalia who is an ex-Muslim. She became a Christian and then independently independently her husband was also 
was, was also studying Islam and problems with Islam. Anyway, they both converted. And I'm not talking about Somali Christian TV. This is a totally different, totally different couple uh, from Somalia who converted that we met here. So um, awesome, awesome stuff. And now it's funny because she goes after, now she's been going after uh, Allah, right? People are saying she's too aggressive. She's like, she said it right here on stage. She goes, Allah held me hostage all those years. He can take it. <laughs> so, hey. Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, how you doing there? Come on, of the three of us. Who's here the we go, student? all three of us. But the scary thing is we resemble the three stooges right now. I'm curly. <laughs> I'm dopey. You know, you'd be mulling. This guy would be a loser. Right? I mean, I don't know. You know, ladies and gentlemen, years ago, I told Jay Smith, Jay, if you want to make a difference in the world, focus on two things, the book and the man. And oh, he ran, the man. With, that. He the man. ran with that. The man. You're going to take credit for that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The man. Can, I, can I do that? I love that, Trey Mark. Yeah. 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 And then one day, one day, Jay was standing the the there, and Sam the goes, Sam goes, no, you're wrong, Jay. Jay said, oh, I like that. I'm going to steal that, too. I have nothing original. He keeps stealing all our ideas. I owe it to these two guys right here. Hey, can you rub my head again? There you go. That's right. See? This is like the three stooges right here. I'm <laughs> you see, I'm telling you, man. You rub this head and you prosper in apologetics. Hey, look baby. at his eyes. Wow, you're yeah, he's got some, No wonder you look so terrible. He's got some bug eyes <laughs> bugging out of his head. That's man. why I'm single and I'm mingled. No, Is this live? Look like an alien. Right no, no we're, we're already live. No. Well, see, I didn't. They're all right there. See, they're coming. They're saying. Okay, I see it. Well, God bless you all. Listen, we're heading out. I'm getting on a plane, flying back home. It's been great to be with David. It's been great to have been with Sam. I want to say I got I got four different Korans and I got coronavirus. Oh, come, come on, yeah. Coronavirus. <laughs> God bless yeah, you. Yeah, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Hussein, and I've got four different Korans because I was a, I was a Muslim and they told me there's one, but I got four different. Whoa, 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 whoa! You're telling us that these are different. Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not different translations. You're telling us that these are different Arabic Korans. Yes. One is called Khalif. One is called. Bezi, one is called Susi, one is called Duri, and I've got the Hubs and the Warch in the car. So you've got six different I got girls. seven. 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 And there's a Jalalain, and there's an Ibn Kathir. And I was told there was one. One? I was told there was one. I was a Muslim. I was willing to die that there's one. And now I find out there's what? That's why I got this on, because I got coronavirus, you guys. I'm so, I'm so sick in my heart. Help pray for me, man. Hey. I want to do my uh, Aisha song. You gonna do your Aisha song? Uh, you gonna sing it? Do you know it? I can't. I, the thing is, I got it. I got it with music. I'm gonna sing it to you guys. So you're saying I re I recommended that? Don't you remember when I was on? No, you? but it sounds like something I would say. It was a crazy idea you had. You said uh, you guys, interrupted me. Yeah, guys, guys, guys. So I always have these awesome ideas. They just it pop out of those. me. They just pop out of me as we're going along, and then I forget about them. And that's why that's why I say them in live streams. I say, "Whoa, we gotta stop you here. Have to stop we gotta stop, but I gotta tell you this because I'm gonna forget about it." And then he. So the idea was, the magic donkey song should be made about Aisha. About the magic. It's from the magic carpet ride. Magic donkey Come ride. Come take a ride with me, little Aisha, on the magic donkey ride. I've got it with the music and everything, you got man. The music. That's yeah, awesome. my Very voice sucks, but it's still funny. So, hey, coronavirus, you guys, stay away. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen? For years, they tell us perfect preservation right down to the letter. One Quran, one Quran, no different Quran, no difference anywhere. We have that you can you can find Yasser Qadi saying this. He's the one that started this whole holes in the narrative fiasco. But you can go back eight or ten years and find clips of Yasser Qadi saying there has not been a single difference in the entire manuscript tradition of the Quran from the time from the time of Uthman. Uh -huh. From the time of Uthman, he says it. We got him on video saying it. Did he know that was a lie? Yes. Did Yasser Qadi know it was a lie to say there's not one difference anywhere in any Quran? Did he know that was a lie? Yes. And he said it anyway. Why? Why do people keep going back to the same guys who keep telling them lies? And then when they get called out for the lies, they change the lies and invent new lies to justify their old lies. And then the people just keep going back to them. What is this? What, what is this religion, man? I don't know. All right. Girardi said, Girardi said, David, you are a fool. I love your video. Keep it up. May God continue to bless you. Amen. Yeah, so I've been out here at this conference. And so, yeah, I head back, head back tomorrow. 
head back tomorrow and then get, get back to some videos. What do you got here? I got holes in the narrative, man. You see these guys? What did I start? Now everyone's doing it. It's a holy Quran. Now everyone's doing it. How, how do you get this awesome red inside? It's it looks like blood. Is, man. Looks like the Quran. It looks yeah. like the Quran is bleeding. And you know what? <laughs> you just did that. No, they hit yeah, me he out just did that. Him. He walked over in the corner and just drilled a perfect hole. <laughs> what are you talking about? Now, could I just tell him something about this? No. You know what about this? What's interesting about this is that this Quran. You know what it says? It says that they correct all of the punctuation, the Islamic punctuation, Al Azhar University. Al Azhar University. This is the top Sunni educational institution in the world. And they're saying that they're changing the Quran. Are these corrections? Yep, these are the corrections. These are the corrections. They're listing they're listing in the opening of the Quran. The, the Qasr, the Dhamma, and all those things. That, that One Quran perfectly preserved, ladies and gentlemen. Every believe dot. It. Believe it, because someone said it. Every dot. You'll have the coronavirus. Wow, wow, wow. Well, let me go to the Kufuan Ahad. Shout out to Vokab alone. Hey, yo, Vokab was out here with uh, was out here with Veda. We're gonna record a holes in the narrative song with you as Prophet Muhammad, me as Uthman, burning all the Qurans, and uh, uh, Veda would probably be Veda would probably be uh, maybe we'll make him Bilal, and we can all we can all make a dope rap song. All right, what have we been going here? About 25 minutes. Hey, you guys have any questions for anyone? Who we got here? We still got Eddie Delcor here. Lewis Lionheart, that's a weird dude. What happened? Sam Shamoon, that's a weird dude. Yeah. Hey, Eli. Why is that? Why is that in the way? What? This? Who cares about this? Can they see though? No. What's wrong with you, dude? Like a little kid. Um, hang on. Hater. Hey, is this like common sense? Oh yeah, hey, you want to tell everyone how you saved my life from the jihadi? Yeah, well, that you thought was a jihadi? jihadi? Yeah. I need attention, guys, that's why I'm in the camera. I've been neglected all this weekend. Hey, look, here's a good question. Is Sam drunk? Is Sam drunk? No, that's how he acts when he needs attention. Uh, dang it, yeah, see? Fake Nike said... Fake Nike said any ex-Muslims. Yes, there were multiple. And in fact, the guy with the with the holes in, with the with the holes in the Quran right there, Hussein. Yeah, he's a he's an ex-Muslim. Why don't you just give out his location, everything else, while you're at it? I said Hussein. He said he said. His, yeah, his name is insane. Insane to the membrane. Insane in the Hussein. Insane in the brain. Don't try it. Don't try it. Don't try to play me out. Can't play with my yo yo. Don't try to play me out. All right, man. That's enough. Well, this is terrible. I got all the attention. Hey, man, sing for any me. What's up, baby? Uh, hey, hey, here you go. Here you go. Who is your favorite speaker? My favorite speaker here was actually an ex-Muslim woman who gave a really, really messed up story uh, of when she was a Muslim. Um, raped, family covered up the rape by making her have an abortion. Um, she eventually left Islam and is now She's a lawyer now, so she's she's she's, she's got an awesome awesome cool life now. What's up? Those two ladies want to come and say hi, but they want you to invite them. Yeah. Come on, ladies. <laughs> Firm crew said, "Give me the address to this place." Um, yeah, we're in Yorba Linda right now, but it's over, so you won't get here in ten. Oh, hello. Come on. Here we got some warriors. Get, get, get close. You just want to wave or you want to go for Jesus? It's not that bad. Uh, yeah, you're being cut off, so come over here. Come over here. No, 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 it's fine. No, 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 that's fine. Right here. This is my number one fan. She loves Elvis. It's not our neighbor. Not Rabbit, you love Elvis. Come hold me tight. Whisper, my darling. We so are. So All right, man. All right, man. See, she, she, she even blushes. She really thinks it's Elvis. <laughs> Notice, even when someone else just wants to say hi or something like that, Sam has to jump up in there and get all the attention. Hey, Eli, you want to say hi? Um, 
Sure. Yeah. I'm not trying to be offensive, but you're kind of down here, so. Uh, Step up on this step, young man. Hey there. Uh, what are you doing, Eli? I am, uh, uh, my name's Elijah, and um, I'm a big fan of the channel, and I came Smart. to this conference. <laughs> and um, I don't know, I guess uh, the least I could say, because I don't want to spoil too much of what I'm planning on doing, but uh, I'm planning on starting my own YouTube channel someday. Is it going to be dope? Yeah, for sure. Okay, good. Yeah. Smart he likes He likes IP, for example. Yes. We were big, talking a bunch big of fan, Big fan of inspiring philosophy. This is the next IP. If you listen to him talk... He's like IP, except minus the weirdness. If you talk, to, if you talk to inspiring philosophy, that dude is weird. That's a weird dude. Look, we uh, we 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 all shared a house when we were when we were uh, you know collaborating and stuff down there. And uh, inspiring, I wake up in the morning, and I, IP walks up just like this to me. So you be me, you're the camera. IP walks up and goes, I made bacon, <laughs> and then walks away. And I'm like, what is wrong with this dude, right? Anyway, so I don't uh, know, man. You might be underestimating my weirdness. <laughs> okay, yeah, I haven't, I haven't interacted haven't that yet. much, so. All right, all right. So, uh, so you're good. But yeah, so uh, we'll. Uh, I guess we'll see. Thanks, David. You'll, for you'll be catching this young buck when he comes out. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Take care. Um, Jez Z said, David, do you know Christian Prince personally? Um, no, just uh, uh, just from some live streams um, that he was on. Jeremy Wong said, did Sam speak at the conference? No. Who's going to let Sam speak nowadays when he's annoying everybody? No one likes Sam anymore. Um, let's see. Are there any Orthodox people there? Uh, yes, there were. There were some cops here. Um, yeah, there's basically all, all kinds of people. But, yeah, generally lots of people who would come to an apologetics conference dealing with Islam, evangelism, things like that, L lots of them, if they are um, if they came from somewhere else, uh, either they're ex-Muslims or, you know, if they're from Egypt or one of the other, country, other countries in the Middle East or something like that, you end up with Christians from a lot of different, uh, a lot of different backgrounds. All right, guys, so probably hang on for just a couple minutes. Just wanted to say hi to everyone since couldn't say hi for a long time, a whole week whole week. Hey, there you go. Look. Caroline says, uh, I love Sam, but he's getting annoying. Yeah. He, he's been like that. And that, that kind of sums up Sam, right? He's really cool in certain ways and simultaneously the most annoying, annoying person you'll ever met in your entire life. And uh, yeah, so that's just the perils. <laughs> this is funny. Jack Ray said, David, if you and Sam are talking at the same time, do you cure insomnia twice as fast? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, well, no, we cancel each other out because my awesome stuff cancels out his insomnia-causing material. He actually blurted that out as I was getting up to speak on Friday. I stand up on stage and, say, and I hear, cure for insomnia right here. Um, Micah Gray said, David and Sam are the best duo. Yeah. Uh, we do work well together. I think it was from years of doing Jesus or Muhammad show. And so, uh, yeah, we do work well together. Let's see. <laughs> Can you ask the gunman to say hi to the camera? Actually, I did get a, we went out to a mosque on Friday to hand out materials and stuff and um, uh, so I got some video footage of that. I might post it tonight. I didn't. I didn't record a lot because uh, most of them didn't want. If we actually got into a an, into a, a conversation with them, most of them didn't want us recording. If we're actually recording the conversation, so just got a couple clips here and there. But yeah, we headed out to a mosque out here in California, and it was totally it was totally peaceful. There's some people who don't like it, but they just tended to walk off. You know, walk off or. Uh, but but most people were were very nice. Some of them got it. Some of them you know were willing to have a conversation and so on. So. It was pretty cool. Not all mosques are like that, but that was a very nice one. Oh my goodness, George! Hello, brother. Pastor George Sayeg here. How are you guys? Pastor George. George. Straight out of Sudan. What do you want to say to everyone, George? 
we love you guys and uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, this weekend uh, debates and please 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 left Dr. Shabir Ali in your prayers we want to see him to come to Christ and to accept Christ as the Lord and Savior of his life we need him with us we need him in our side because he can make all sense when he come to Christ his arguments will make more sense we cannot blame him he doesn't have enough evidence or any material to be able to make more sense now but if you come to know Christ he will make all the sense all right, that'd be cool. Hey, George, why don't, uh, why don't you give him a little, for new people, why don't you tell them uh, what you do out here? Give him a little background, give him a little story where you come from and all that. I was born and grew up in Sudan. Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not that tall, but... Uh, <laughs> I we, think I can actually point this down some. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I was born in Sudan, North Sudan, but my grandparents from Syria, uh, the Turkish took over Syria over a hundred years ago. They perse persecuted Christians. They flee to Sudan. I was born there, but I was never Sudanese citizen. But uh, praise God, my first citizen in heaven, the second one in the United States of America, the greatest country in the world. I, 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 if you are in America, please don't complain. Appreciate the fact that you have the freedom and use it. Use that freedom. In Sudan, we have 2.5 million Christians being killed for their faith just for following Christ as a Lord and Savior. But what an awesome opportunity we have here to reach out, to stand outside the mosques, to preach the gospel to the Muslims. And it's just awesome. I have a friend of mine, and uh, after he came with me to the mosque, he's from Israel, he's Palestinian. He came uh, at, after the outreach, he looking at his body, want to make sure he's okay. He was surprised he can do something like that in Sudan, in Israel or Palestine. Muslims would never allow him to stand in front of a mosque to hand out Bibles. But what an awesome opportunity. These people willing to engage, willing to talk. Muslims, the majority of them, they are very loving, very nice people. You know why? Because they are bad Muslims. They don't follow the Quran. But praise God, the majority of Muslims are bad Muslims. They don't follow the Quran. A uh, very, very small number of Muslims, uh, they are very passionate about Islam. But I want to tell you, this, the more passionate they are, the closer they are to the gospel because they are really sincerely want to they want to obey God but they don't know him they don't know God they really think because the Quran claimed to be revealed from the God of the Bible to be revealed from the God of Abraham and Jacob and Isaac and that's why they really think that they are following God and their God asking them to kill people for his sake they, he, they think they're doing the right thing but if if they know about Christ, if their eyes open to the truth, they will make a great Christian warriors, not carrying the weapons, but carrying the word of God, to share the gospel with their own people. Uh, remember our brother Nabil, uh, they can make, we can have many, many, many Nabils if you reach out to the Muslims around you. I encourage you, I encourage you, reach out to the Muslims, reach out to these people with the love of Christ. They need to know that you love them. They need to know that you care about them. They are not a project. They are human like me and you. Many Muslims are killed by Muslims in the Middle East. Many Muslims here, they have loved ones being killed by other Muslims. Uh, care about them, ask them questions, uh, hear their hearts, hear their cry, offer to pray for them. But remember, there's only one name for us to be pray to. It's the name of Jesus. Not pray in Isa, don't pray in Allah name, don't try to water down the gospel, please pray in Jesus name because that's the name we have that he is the only one can answer prayers and when there that that prayer is answered they will know because of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior the second person in the Trinity the one he left heaven and came to this earth to die and lay down all his life for us I encourage you visit us at ministry to muslims.com if you want to reach to reach out to the Muslim in your community uh, please feel free to contact us we have gospel material free of charge uh, to provide it for you. You can just pay the shipping, that would be awesome, but we will give you the material for free. Uh, if you want to go to the mosque in your area, I'd be more than happy. If you want to have a team, you, I, I'd be more than happy to come to you th get there in your city and we can do the first outreach together and do some training. Maybe David can come as well. Uh, but we want to see Muslims reached all across America. We want to see Muslims not just in America, in all in entire Europe. Let's reach out to these people with the gospel message. Let's reach out to them. Amen? There is no better time than now. And you know why? Because all this new information about the Quran and 
all these things being exposed, I think this is a great opportunity now to take advantage of it, to get awareness out there for them to know what's happening. Amen. Yeah, this is, this is the greatest time in history, George. Did you know this is the greatest time in history? Absolutely. Did you know that for 14 centuries you couldn't do this? If you wanted to talk to Muslims, you'd have to go to a Muslim country and they're going to chop your head off. And <laughs> if you're if you're successful, there might be plenty of nice. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> What's happening? Hey, we're live. Why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Sylvester Harris from Chino, California. Uh, my daughter came out. My daughter told me about it. I didn't really know it was, it was a meeting until my daughter told me about it. And she's like, you want to go? And I said, Let's go. And so here's the deal. Let me tell you what I've gotten out of it. I've been, I've been, I've been an apologetic for quite a while, most of my Christian life. When things like this happen, it just gives me more confidence and more, um, more uh, desire to engage uh, with uh, unbelievers, Muslims, anyone. So this right here, I, if you guys don't, if you guys don't know about it, come any any conference, not just this one, but any conference is dealing with apologetics. I invite you guys to come and just get stronger in your walk and in your uh, apologetics and uh, talking to other people and stuff like that. And just and so so something else something else is here is that okay so Sam is here Sam Shimon is here other people sadly <laughs> so other people here so what 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 happens is is that you'll see Sam talking over there you talking over other people so you get these little pockets of knowledge going off so everybody end up going to these little groups and there's knowledge being spit off going to different places and stuff like that. I love it. I love it. Anyway, so that's my story. I'm here, uh, invited. I love it. So keep coming. I'll keep coming back. All right. Mm -hmm. Cool stuff. Cool Deuces. Stuff. Yeah. And so, guys, uh, you want to come out next year? Going to be cool stuff going on. Next year. Next year. No. Next year going to be in September. What? In March, the third week of March, North Carolina. We're going to have a conference like this. Are you coming? That's East Coast. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Please let's. North Carolina, March. Around Charlotte area, in that small area, there's over 10 mosques in that one area. I went to a restaurant, I'm coming out of the restaurant, they have a stand giving free Qurans. What? They are so active, but sadly the Christians are not reaching out to them. Let's do some training there, let's reach out to the Muslims hey, there. Hey, yo, 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 check this out, check this out. Um, I wanted to get her on here, but, but she's already gone. I mentioned... Uh, uh, Hope, the yeah. Christian woman from Somalia. Yeah, well, she was a Muslim from Somalia, and she converted. What'd you say, two years ago? Yep. Yeah, and and then her husband converted right after that. But she said she'd been here since when? 1996. 94. 19. She'd been here since 1994. She'd been in the United States since 1994. How many Christians did she say shared the gospel with her? Zero. Jesus revealed Himself to her, and she came out of Islam. She went back to her Christian friends. Why? Why you never told me about Jesus? Yeah, and guys, think about that because, you know, it, it, it makes sense. It makes sense when we hear about Muslims coming to Christ through dreams and visions in Muslim countries when they couldn't get the gospel. But for someone to live in the United States for, let's see, it would be 26 years now. So for 24 years, 24 years, and not to hear the gospel. And then <laughs> needing a direct, you know, needing needing a direct encounter with Jesus in order to get the message. Guys, come on, we got work to do. This is it. This is again. This is the best time in history. If you want to refute Islam, this is the best time in history. If you want to reach Muslims with the gospel, this is the best time in history. There, it, there, are no, 14 centuries worth of Christians could not have dreamed of a situation where you can talk to a Muslim in Saudi Arabia on your phone, on social media. Couldn't have dreamt of a situation like that and we can all do that now, so. There is a Muslim lady, uh, she was in Yemen. In, uh, we met her in 2006 in Dearborn, Michigan at the Arabic festival. That's where Nabil and David were arrested uh, a few years later. But that lady, she saw my friend wearing a cross and she just walked in the middle of over 100,000 people. She just pushed everybody walking toward that cross. And she told Deborah, she wanted to talk to her. She had to bring her daughter to, to interpret for her, to translate for her. She said her job in Yemen was to break rocks, to get a smaller rock out of that bigger rock, and to polish it and use it for jewelry. But one day in 1996, 10 years prior, she broke that rock. She got a smaller rock, but it looks like a hill 
with a crack to look like a cross in it. She kept it for 10 years. She insisted we meet her the next day in that same spot. She brought the rock with her. When Deborah saw the rock, Deborah started crying. She told her, why are you crying? She wanted to know. Deborah told her, Jesus said, if my people will stop crying out, the rocks will cry out. The rocks will cry out. Jesus did not find someone in Yemen to tell her about him. He let the rocks to cry out to her, to tell her about him. She knew there's something about that rock, something special. She kept it for 10 years, and that day she got to hear the gospel message. My friends, Jesus is able to let the rocks to preach the gospel. But what an honor. He's willing to use me and you and David and all of us to reach out to these people. I challenge you. You start reaching out to the Muslims that you being seeing in the Gaza station, wherever you go and you're being ignoring. Uh, one thing you can do today, you can Google the Islamic holidays, coming upcoming Islamic holidays. Buy a bar of chocolate, a Bible in that language, wrap it and give it to your Muslim neighbors in that holiday. They will never say no for a gift in a holiday. It's an amazing opportunity. Go ahead and do that. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, guys. My brother. And please, please keep us in prayer. I'm looking for as many people as possible to set up an alarm at 1 o'clock on Fridays because that's the time we're standing outside the mosque. Please, when that alarm goes off, pray for us. We need your prayers. Amen? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so guys, George takes teams out to the mosque so that when Muslims are leaving the mosque and they're walking home on the sidewalks and so on, there are Christians standing there um, ready to have conversations, ready to distribute material. So what he's saying is, you know he's going to be out there. That's, um, uh, what's the time zone called? Pacific time? Pacific time, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. You know where this guy is going to be. Uh, he's going to be out in front of a mosque with materials. So, uh, so yeah, that's a good time to put it in your alarm to pray for that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. God mm -hmm. bless. All right, and uh, you guys should remember, you guys should remember, George, if you remember about a year, it was a year and a half, two years ago, I said there's a Christian ministry out here that, that needs a, a truck because he had tons of materials and had no way of bringing them around. And uh, he, another ministry had donated a trailer to haul the supplies, but there was, there was no truck. And uh, so I did a GoFundMe and everyone, I asked for like twenty thousand dollars for the truck, and people gave like fifty. So, and it turned out he actually needed it because the thing is the the, the trailer was massive, and he needed he needed a a bigger truck than I thought he would need. But yeah, he got a he got an awesome truck, and he has been burning that thing up, uh, driving all over the country, hauling uh, hauling tracks, Bibles in different languages, uh, DVDs, and so on. So, pretty cool. Um, all right, I think I'll sign off here in a couple minutes. Just wanted to say, again, I just, again, I just wanted to say hi. What? No, he didn't. He said as long as by 11, we're good. You see, Sam, he's always trying to cut things short. Huh? Oh, he said, <laughs> Sam's trying to get me to cut this off because he wants to go to Denny's. 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 <laughs> How you doing? All right. All right, come on over here, Sam. We'll say, oh, yes. bye, to, we'll say bye to everyone. Should I say... Uh, you got to sing... Uh, sing uh, uh, oh, why don't I say time to sing Are goodbye. you lonesome <laughs> tonight? Is your heart filled with pain? Tell me, dear. Tell me, dear. Are you lonesome tonight? Time to say goodbye. For mommy and all. Can we get a word in? Hey guys, uh, if you liked uh, like Anthony's debates, go sign up on his Patreon, Anthony Rogers. There's a reason for that. Uh, the reason Anthony can't be on with us when we live stream a lot is because he works multiple jobs and one of his jobs, apart from what, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, is at night, right when we normally go live. I wanted to set something up where me and Anthony, some combination of me, Anthony, Sam, and Tony Costa are live every night at eight o'clock for like a month. Uh, like all challenges accepted. Uh, invite Muslims to, you know, challenge us on the Trinity and things like that. Want to do that for like a uh, month, but we need to get this guy to quit his night job so he can be going live with us every night. So 
Um, if you saw, if you if you didn't see the debates, check out the debates. You know what this guy knows, and this is a guy people should be supporting. Cause where are they going now? Where are they going now, dude? Where are they going? Shabir, could, if Shabir couldn't oh. do it. Where are they going? Who's going? Who are they going to get? People are saying Adnan Rashid. Are you serious? Adnan Rashid would run circles. I mean, <laughs> Adnan Rashid's going to run circles around you. Do you understand that? You believe it? No. <laughs> I, I don't either. I don't either. Uh, but hey, hey, since it was recommended, Adnan. Let, let, let me go ahead and toss this out there. We have not discussed this. Let me ask. Adnan Rashid, Mohammed Hijab, Ali Dawa, Farid, Yasser Qadi, Zakir Naik, if you, any of you, think you can do a better job than Dr. Shabir Ali, you can do it on my channel anytime, same topics with Anthony Rogers. Anthony! Did not discuss this beforehand. Do you accept? I absolutely accept. Now, guys, just think about this. Muslims, you think that's your bread and butter. Oh, we attack the Trinity. Oh, and, and we have the pure theology. Why? Why is this guy willing to take on anyone in the world? And yet, when you go to your guys and say, hey, Adnan, hey, all you guys, Anthony agreed to debate you. Are you willing to face him? Watch them make excuses. Watch the excuses. They will not do it then you need to start asking why. And the reason is, for years, the arguments that Muslim scholars have given to their people have been based on deception and concealing information. It took a while, but Christians have been going through the information for years and learning how to expose it. And now Christians are in a position to just demolish all the holes and all the narratives. Oh, and I've got and a, that's lot why they're more, terrified. a lot more than I've shared with Shabir. That's just, that was just a drop. That was just a little drop. That was a taste. You guys want some more? Huh? Come on. Come on. Anyway. All right, guys. Looks like we got to go to Denny's because Sam Shimon says so, and everyone always has to do what Sam wants. All right. Catch y'all later. They're shutting the lights up. Oh, lights are on. Catch you later.